But you know why we flourished in that hundred years beyond resiliency and goodness? We flourished because at those special moments, those moments when we needed leadership the most, we had it. We had a Teddy Roosevelt who said, we're going to break up these big corporations and we're going to restore power to the people. We had a Woodrow Wilson who understood what, how important it was that we created a new banking system in this country. And then we create a League of Nations where all countries could come together. And we saw a Franklin Roosevelt, who at the depths of despair and the extraordinary depths of economic depravity in this country, found a way to bring us all together. And not only that, not only that, but to believe in ourselves. That's right. To believe in ourselves. To know that all we had to fear was fear itself. And to believe that we could overcome all this adversity and our best days were still ahead. How badly America yearns for that kind of leadership now. That's right. How badly we need to believe in ourselves. How badly we need to put this country back on the right track so that we can clearly say to the rest of the world and to the de Tocquevilles who are looking now, we are still good Americans who want to do the right thing. I worry about the direction this country is taking, and I know you do too, or you probably wouldn't be here tonight. I travel, as some of I, I know some of you do, and as I travel abroad, I'm appalled at the image the United States has. I worry about the message we send to the rest of the world. I worry about the fact that the Americans are now viewed totally differently than we were in those glorious days after World War II when we were perceived to be the saviors of this great globe. And you know why I worry the most? Because the very fundamentals, the respect for the rule of law, the constitutional principles upon which this country was founded have been violated and violated and violated again. This country ought never to support torture. I don't care what the circumstances are. the next president of the United States, and I hope it is Barack Obama, I hope on the very first day he says to the American people and to the rest of the world, Guantanamo is closed, we're not going to close, we're not going to have it. And we're not going to motivate people out of fear. We're not going to be wiretapping average citizens to find out their conversations in some some crazy notion that somehow we can, we can eavesdrop on the American people and be safer. That's not who the American people are. We've got to say that loudly and clearly in respect to the Constitution. And so the stakes couldn't be higher. We have an opportunity for the first time now in eight years to make it right, to put this country on the right track, I know some of you have heard me say this before, but I really believe it in my heart and my soul that every election is really about two things. Every election is about answering the question, what kind of country do we want to be? That's really pretty basic. What kind of country do we want to be? And the second question is equally as fundamental, and that question is, in whose hands? Will we put our future? Well, to the first question, what kind of country do we want this to be? I'd like to think that my grandchildren, and I now have four of them, will have the opportunity to have the single best health care system this world <laughs> embarrassed the fact that we spend more than any other country in the world 
Now, $7,500 for every man, woman, and child. And we don't have the access that most other countries have, whether they're industrialized or not. 60% of the people in this country don't have dental insurance today. 80% don't have mental health insurance. 95% of us don't have long-term insurance, but we all consider ourselves lucky because we've got insurance at least for a doctor. We came in 35th in overall quality last year, 31st in, infant mort in, in life expectancy and 29th in infant mortality, and we pay 40% more than any other country. That is an embarrassment, and it's got to change in this country beginning in 2009. upon foreign sources for our energy. 85% of the new energy based on fossil fuels in the future, in the next 30 years, 80% is going to come from the most volatile part of the country, the world, the Middle East. 80%. And I don't know about you, but I don't want my grandson or my granddaughter going to the Middle East to defend oil that we shouldn't be using in the first place. We've got to understand that the war on terror is not going to be won or lost in Iraq. That after spending two trillion dollars, losing four thousand lives, and spending a length of time longer than we spent in World War II, the time has come for to bring our troops home. And I believe that we're going to see that happen. I'm just hopeful. I'm just hopeful that a president can understand the disparity between the rich and the poor in this country is getting worse. Yes. Yeah. That those who are left out are becoming more locked out than they've ever been before. And that it's harder and harder for those who are locked out to make ends meet and to have hope again. And unless we understand that in if we don't change our economic policy in this country to ensure that working people have the option to create the kind of jobs in this country that bring about decent wages and opportunities for growth and vitality, incomes that allow them a living wage, whether it's on a reservation or in Rapid City or in New York City, We've got to have economic fairness in this country, and I want to see a democratic person created for the That's the kind of country that I would like us to see.